Hey guys, welcome to uh, today's lesson. We're going to be looking at solving exponential equations. Remember, exponentials are where the variable occurs in the exponent. So we'll be looking at equations that have variables in the exponent, and we will be looking at several methods on how to solve these. So let's get started. I um, hope you'll take out some paper and work along with us. And let's see. Our first example will be example one. And we're going to look at how to solve a very simple type uh, exponential equation. Let's say we have something 2 to the x is equal to 8. All right, this one is. Uh, something that looks difficult because when that variable sits in the exponent it looks like something that could be uh, a little tough to solve but actually it's not that difficult because the first method we're going to look at solving these is to look at the base on your exponential here we have a base of two all right and that base of two is sitting right here that is our base and we know that we have an 8 on the right-hand side. So the first method says if I can take this 8 and express it with a base of 2, then it makes solving this equation very, very simple. So we know that 8 can be rewritten as 2 cubed. So we would have the equation 2 to the x is equal to 2 to the third power because remember, 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2, and we know that is equal to 8. Now, once you have it in this form, for both of these sides of the equation to be equal, the corresponding parts of the equation have to be equal. Because if these both have the same base of 2, this requires that their exponents also be equal. So now, all we have to do is pull the exponents and set those equal to each other, and we find out that x is equal to 3. Okay? So let's look at another problem, but this one we will uh, do the same type method, but let's see what happens when the problem gets eh, seemingly more complicated. Uh, let's say we have a problem such as... Uh, mm, Let's say 36 to the x is equal to, uh, let's say, 6 to the x or 3x minus 5. Okay? So on this problem, I noticed that I have two sides of the equation. One has a base of 36 and the other has a base of 6. And remember, this method that we're looking at right now says if I can express both sides in the same base, then I can look at the corresponding parts of the equation and make the exponents equivalent, as long as the base is equivalent. So I just look at the numbers involved. I have a 6, and I ask myself, can I rewrite that 36 in terms of 6? And we can. We know that 36, and before we do this, I'm going to put this in parentheses so we don't get confused. 6 to the 3x minus 5. So this 36, we can express as 6 squared. And I want to put that in parentheses because I want to emphasize that we can apply our rules for exponents. We know that if we raise a power to another power, then that gives us the chance to multiply our exponents. So we're going to say 6 to the 2 times x is 6 to the 2x is equal to 6 to the 3x minus 5. Okay? So once we have this, we have both sides of the equation with the same base, and now we simply have to uh, grab our exponents and require them to be equal because that's the only way that both sides of both sides of the equation can be equal. So we pull our 2x on the left-hand side, and we pull our 3x minus 5 on the right-hand side, and we make those equal. 
Now I simply have to solve. I'm going to uh, move this 5 over by adding 5 to both sides. And I get 2x plus 5 is equal to 3x because this 5 plus negative 5 is 0. And I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And I end up with 5 is equal to x, which I don't like to leave the variable on the right-hand side. So we're going to say x is equal to 5. Okay? And that is our solution. All right? So again, it's not difficult. You just simply <coughs> have to ask yourself, can I express both sides, both sides of the equation with the same base? If you can, it greatly simplifies your solution method. Okay? So let's look at another problem. Uh, we'll do another example. So we have example three. And let's say you have this problem, okay? And we have eight to the five X minus seven is equal to 32 to the three X plus eight, okay? So we have this problem and again, we're in the same situation where we ask ourselves, can we express each side of the equation in terms of the same base? And we know that eight is a factor of 32, but it's not like a perfect square. I can't say eight times eight and get 32 because eight squared is equal to 64. But I can express eight with a base of two so we're going to do that. So first of all, I'm going to put this in parentheses so we don't confuse ourselves. And we're also going to write this one. Sorry, I switched to erase real quick there. 3x plus 8. Okay? So I can take this problem and express 8 as 2 cubed. And then I'm going to ask myself, can I express 32 as a base of two. Well, one way to check these guys is to do a factor tree, okay? I know that 32 is four times eight, and I know that the eight can be written as two cubed because we just saw that over here, and four is actually two squared. So if I multiply these two, then I can write this as two to the two plus three using our rules for exponents which is two to the fifth. So yes, 32 can be written as base two. So we're gonna write 32 as two to the fifth, and that's raised to the three X plus eight. Now, just like last time, we're gonna apply our rules for exponents. If I raise a power to another power, I simply multiply my exponents. So I'm gonna have two to the three times five X minus seven. And I know it looks like it's a little more complicated, but it's not because all you end up with is a situation where you have some uh, distributive properties. But before we carry on, we're going to go ahead and uh, say if both sides have a base of two, then the next part says both of our exponents have to be equal to each other. Okay. So now we're going to take both exponents and set these equal to each other. And then we'll simplify both sides of the equation. Okay? So if I want to simplify both sides of this equation, I multiply 3, distribute it. 3 times 5x is equal to 15x. And 3 times negative 7 is equal to a negative 21. And here I get... 3 times 5 is 15x, and 5 times 8 is 40. Now, guys, I hope you're seeing something happen here. If I have the same term on both sides of the equation, they cancel. 
So what we end up with is negative 21 is equal to 40. And we know that these aren't equal. So what you end up with is no solution. Okay. Yes, that is a possibility. Okay. Again, don't force the equation to be something it's not. Let the problem be what it is. And check your math if you think, oh, that can't be right. Go back through it and double check. But it is the case that right now we end up with negative 21 not equal to 40. That means there's no value of x that will satisfy this equation. Okay? So let's move on. All right, our next example, we're going to... look at a second method of solving these equations. We're going to say that we have 7 to the x is equal to 9. Okay? And the question is, how do we go about solving this? Oh, since we cannot write both sides with base 7, because we know that 7, I can't, find an integer value that's going to produce that 9. Even 7 squared is 49. So this is going to be rather difficult. Uh, we can't use the first method we talked about, but we can use logarithms. We know that exponentials and logarithms are inverse functions. Okay? So if I have an exponential, I can use a log function to undo the exponential. The same way a square root undoes a square, or a square undoes a square root. Same thing here. An exponential can be undone with a log. So what we want to do is we're going to take, uh, and there's two ways to do this. First one, we're going to use the common log, okay, which is log base 10. So we're going to take the common log of 7 to the x is equal to the common log of 9. So you're basically taking the common log of both sides and our rules for logarithms tell us once I have log seven to the X, this exponent can come out front, okay? And that's the benefit of undoing the exponential with the log is I can uh, bring the exponent down. So now we have X times common log of seven is equal to the common log of 9. And now I simply, to solve for x, just divide both sides by log 7. Okay? And then that gives me x, because log 7s cancel, so I get x equals to log of 9 divided by log of 7. All right, and now we can simply uh, find this on our calculator. So if I pull up a calculator here, uh, let's see what we can find here. Um, do I have, yes, yeah, scientific mode. So we're going to say log, which is right here. So I'm going to do 9 common log divided by 7 common log is equal to and we get 1.129 so there we go so now I know that x is equal to 1.129 1.129 and we know that's approximately equal to because we're rounding our answer. And now we can move on. Now there is a second approach. Rather than using common log, I could have done log base 7. Okay? And that right there would have uh, produced uh, a different type result. But in the end, I would have done change of base to use my calculator. Or I could use something like uh, the... Uh, Desmos graphing calculator or their Desmos scientific calculator, which I believe does uh, log 
with a base. So anyways, it's up to you. I find this approach uh, still simple. Uh, it's easy to punch on a calculator, so not a problem. So you can use either. And let me show you how that works. Um, we'll put a big or over here. I could have done log base seven of seven to the X equals log base seven of nine. So that would have given me X. Hmm. Sorry guys. That would have given me X times log base seven of seven is equal to log base seven of nine. And we know log base seven of seven is just one. So this is X equal to log base seven of nine, which in the end, if I did change a base, that's still log nine over log seven, okay? Which is what we got over here, okay? Or if you have a calculator, your TI calculator sometimes has this, if it's enabled, you can do a log base on there, or like I said, Desmo scientific calculator will do a log base seven as well but it's up to you. I think either method is uh, fairly simple as far as the approach. All right, so let's look at another example. I'm gonna do example five. And, all right, for example number five, we're gonna have a 15 is equal to four to the three X plus one. Okay. And we want to figure out what is X in this case. I look at 15, I cannot express that as base four or base two easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the log of both sides. Now, last time we did common log, but we can do a natural log, okay? So I can do natural log of 15 is equal to the natural log of four to the three X plus one. Once I take the natural log of both sides, the rules of logarithms say that I can bring this exponent down. So we're gonna have log or natural log of 15 is equal to three X plus one times the natural log of four. And to be able to solve for this X here, I want to go ahead and divide out my natural log of four, okay? And these will cancel and give you one. So now we have the natural log of 15 divided by the natural log of four is equal to three X plus one. And to solve for X, we're gonna subtract one from both sides. So I'm gonna get natural log of 15 divided by the natural log of four minus one is equal to three X. And then the last step, if I can scroll down a bit. All right, the last step is to divide both sides by three. And I'm gonna divide all of this by three. And if you're punching your calculator, you might want to go ahead and put that in parentheses because if you forget, and do log, natural log of 15 divided by natural log of four minus one and then hit divide or slash three, it's only gonna divide the one by three if you leave off the parentheses. So it may be a good idea to go ahead and put the parentheses so when you're uh, punching this on your calculator, you'll remember, okay? So we'll pull up our calculator and we're gonna do open bracket and this is natural log of 15, and use LN, divided by uh, four natural log minus one, close parentheses, divided by three is equal to. And we get 0 0.318 if we round that. So X is equal to 0 0.318. And again, that's approximately equal to, we are rounding that. So again, when I'm using a method of 
taking the log of both sides to solve this exponential. It doesn't matter which logarithm I use, okay? As long as I'm consistent on both sides. I can't do a log base uh, 15 or log base four and then do log base 15. That doesn't work. And why would I do log base 15? Um, if I choose a natural log on the left, I can't do a common log on the right. You have to be consistent. Take the common log of both sides, take the natural log of both sides, or take the log base four of both sides, okay? I find it easier just to use natural log or common log. And typically, I use natural log um, just by default. So let's look at example six, okay? So example number six, let's say I have something like uh, 200e to the um, 0.25x is equal to uh, 360, okay? If I'm solving this exponential, we haven't had this issue up to now because our exponential has already been isolated, but you have to have the exponential by itself before I start taking the log of both sides. That simplifies matters. If I were to take the natural log of both sides in this case, and I would use a natural log in this case because I have a base E. If you have base E in the problem, stick with natural log. But if I did natural log right now, I would have the natural log of a product and I would have to apply my rules of exponents that say natural log of A times B is equal to natural log of A plus natural log of B on the left hand side. I don't wanna do that. I want to just go ahead and divide both sides by the 200 and then take the natural log, okay? That greatly simplifies things. So we're gonna Go ahead and divide out our 200 because we want to go ahead and isolate our exponential. The 200s cancel and give you 1 times e to the 0.25x. Here I can cancel my n zeros and if I wanted to simplify that further, I could say 4 into 36 is 9, 4 into 20 is 5, okay? So that would be 9 fifths. So again, that helps if you go ahead and simplify that. So we end up with e to the 0.25x is equal to nine over five, okay? Now we want to take the natural log of e to the 0.25x is equal to the natural log of nine fifths, okay? So right now I want to bring the exponent down and we have 0.25x equals because this natural log of e is actually equal to one okay so we get 0.25x is equal to the natural log of nine over five and then we end up since this is one fourth x i can multiply both sides by four and then these cancel and I get X is equal to because four times one fourth well that's just one okay so I get four times the natural log of nine over five so again I'm gonna pull up my calculator it's not gonna cause me problems here and I'm gonna do nine divided by five equals and then I'm gonna take the natural log of that and then I'm going to say times 4 equals. And I get 2.351. Okay. So x is equal to 2.351. Approximately equal to because we are rounding that answer. And that is your final result. Okay. Guys, can we check our answer? Yes. I could check this graphically by graphing both sides of the equation. I could also plug my x back in. All right. All right, let's look at our next example. All right. And I want to look at 
uh, example seven. All right, example number seven. Let's say I have uh, nine plus three e to the x is equal to 13, okay? Now on this problem, I have the same issue as we had on the last. Our exponential is not isolated, and that's our first step is to get that exponential by itself. I don't care if it's a natural exponential or three to some power, two to some power, five to some power. It has to be on one side of the equation by itself before I start solving the equation using logarithms. So we're first going to take and subtract nine from both sides. Okay. And we end up with this going to zero. So this leaves us on the left hand side with 3 times e to the x and 13 minus 9 that should be equal to 4 because 9 plus 4 is equal to 13 and then we still got to get e to the x by itself so I want to divide both sides by 3 and I get e to the x is equal to 4 thirds and now we can take the natural log. Remember if it's base E, I want to take the natural log. So we're going to take natural log of both sides. Oh, that's almost natural log. So four thirds. Okay. And we know this exponent can be brought out front. And that gives us X times natural log of E is equal to natural log of four thirds and we know natural log of e is just one so x oh i'm erasing x is equal to because that goes to one natural log of four thirds so all we have to do is open our calculator again and we will say four divided by three equals and we're going to take the natural log and that is 0.288, okay? So we get 0 0.288. All right, and then we're done. Now there is one other type of expon exponential equation that you can encounter that is uh, kind of tricky but it's got a clever solution method. So it's, it's really, really interesting. So we're going to look at this next problem. This will be example eight. And you'll see what I mean if I can find my mouse. There it is. I lost it on the page. So we got example number eight. So we want to solve, and this is going to be e to the 2x minus uh, 4e to the x plus uh, 2 is equal to 0, okay? So how we're gonna do this, okay? Um, this has a very, very clever way to do this. If you notice e to the two x and e to the x, I hope you're seeing that this looks very, very similar to a quadratic equation, okay? So since that's the case, I can use my rules of exponents that says, hey, if I raise a power to a power, I multiply the exponents. And notice 2 times x, those exponents are multiplied. So I can actually rewrite this as e to the x squared minus 4e to the x plus 2 is equal to 0. Okay? So that gives us a quadratic in e to the x. So what I can do is come over here and say a 
is equal to, and I don't want to use a because, you know, quadratic formula. Let's choose a different variable. We'll call it z is equal to e to the x. So this gives us a quadratic in z, z squared minus 4z plus 2 is equal to 0. So my first step is to solve this quadratic in z and then take whatever solution I get and set it equal to e to the x and then solve for x, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use our quadratic formula. So we're gonna say a, that's why I didn't wanna use a, a is equal to one, b is equal to negative four, and c is equal to two, okay? So our next step is to say z Remember, our quadratic is in Z. So Z is equal to opposite B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Well, first thing I want to check is my B squared minus 4AC. So B squared, uh, yeah, let's erase that. Let's do this in a different color. Okay, so we're going to check our B squared my, man, I cannot write today. B squared minus 4AC is equal to, that's a negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times C, which is 2. And we're checking our discriminant to see what type of solutions we can expect. We get b squared minus 4ac is equal to 16 minus 8, okay? So we get 16 minus 8 equal to 8. What that tells us is that we have two real solutions, okay? So we're going to finish substituting and solve for those solutions. And I'm going to scroll down here for a bit and switch my pen color back. So we're gonna say z is equal to opposite b, and I want to substitute using parentheses. I don't wanna confuse this negative with the negative in my formula, okay? So always substitute with parentheses to avoid that. And this is plus or minus. Well, we just calculated b squared minus 4ac, and we know that's equal to eight, so we're gonna go ahead and put an eight here and then divide by 2 times a, which is 1. So that tells me z is equal to opposite of negative 4 is 4, plus or minus. I can simplify this. This is 8, which is 2 times 4, and 4 is a perfect square. So if we simplify the radical, this becomes 2 square root of 2 divided by 2, which means z is equal to 4 divided by 2 is 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. Okay? So we have two solutions here, and what we want to do is solve for both. Okay? So if I scroll down a bit, we know z is equal to e to the x. So since z equals e to the x, I can say e to the x is equal to 2 plus the square root of 2 or e to the x is equal to 2 minus square root of 2, okay? Now I simply take the natural log of both sides and I get x is equal to the natural log of 2 plus the square root of 2 or e to the x is equal to the natural log of 2 minus the square root of 2. So we have x is equal to, and remember, if I take the natural log of e to the x, I bring the exponent down, and natural log of e is just 1. Okay? So if I'm taking the natural log of e to the x, that's just x. Okay? Um, so we have natural log of 2 plus square root of 2. So we're going to pull up our calculator again, and let's see what we get. So we have a 2 plus the square root of 2. So 2 square root is equal to, and then we're going to take the natural log of that. 
and we get 1.228. So 1.228 or x. Oh man, I messed that up. <laughs> we'll just write natural log of e to the x. I apologize. So the natural log of e to the x is just x is equal to, how many of you were screaming at me just now? And I didn't hear you. <laughs> but anyways, uh, natural log of 2 minus square root of 2. So we're going to bring up the calculator. We're going to clear that out. So we get uh, 2 minus 2 square root equals, and I'm going to take the natural log of that and get a negative 0.5. 535. So right here we have a negative 0 0.535. All right, so these are our solutions. So for our final answer to this quadratic, we get x is equal to, and I can put these in brackets or braces, negative 0 0.535. That's one solution, and the other is 1.228. All right, and that is our answer. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, studying today about um, our solving exponential equations. Remember, there's two methods. If I can write both sides of the equation with the same base, then that makes it really simple because I simply grab the exponents and set those equal to each other. Or I can use a uh, log base, whatever, but I must be consistent. If I take the log of one side as common log, natural log, or log base five, for example, then I would have to do the same logarithm on the other side of the equation. You must be consistent, okay? And remember, always isolate your exponential before you start taking the log of both sides because it will greatly simplify the problem, okay? So anyways, and sometimes you may make it impossible. If I had log of uh, five plus uh, e to the x, well, I can't solve that. You know, I have to isolate the exponential first. So sometimes you're forced to, and you'll discover that if you forget. But anyways, you guys have a great time solving exponential equations. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.